based on the permissible settlement of foundation allowable bearing capacity is found out allowable bearing capacity is the minimum of first is your bearing strength from shear failure criterion second is your bearing strength from settlement criteria right so the bearing capacity that we have to take that allowable bearing capacity we have to take a minimum based on our shear failure criteria and second one is your settlement criteria to determine the allowable bearing capacity few empirical relations have been suggested and discussed below first one is your pack hansen formula so pack hansen formula q allowable net will be equal to your 0.44 n into s into cw so q a net will be your net allowable bearing capacity that is in kilonewton per meter square and n is your corrected spt value and the general range of spt corrected value varies from 1.5 not not this is uh, that that is varies from basically we have to take uh, till 1.5 to 2 times the width till that particular point we have to take the spt value now s is your permissible settlement in mm cw is your water table correction factor so water table correction factor can be given by this expression 0.5 bracket 1 plus dw upon df plus b so we have to use this cw in our above expression to get the allowable and that is net allowable bearing capacity now tang formula and in this case this dw is from the depth of water table below the ground surface now moving on to the tang formula tang also gave an expression to find out the allowable net allowable bearing capacity 1.4 n minus 3 b plus 0.3 upon 2 b whole square dot s dot cw dot cd where cw is your water table correction factor that is equal to 0.5 1 plus dw upon b and this dw is the depth of water table below the base of footing in the above case we were having water table uh, depth from the ground level right from the ground level in this case we are having from the bottom of the footing okay now b is your width of footing cd is your depth correction factor cd is equal to 1 plus df upon b that is lesser than or equal to 2 So in this case, we have to use the CW and CD. First, second is your depth correction factor. First one is your water table correction factor, and we have to place these two correction factor in the particular expression to get the net allowable bearing capacity. And both the cases we have to use the corrected SPT value N. This one, this is your corrected SPT value, not the original SPT value. Third one is your IS code method. for the raft foundation so we'll be we'll be having this expression for determining the safe net bearing capacity that is 0.88 n into sa into cw and it will come in kilonewton per meter square now cw is equal to 0.5 1 plus dw upon df plus b and this is your pack hansen formula sa is your permissible settlement in mm now now this is another equation that is telling you the settlement of foundation we can say it as a uh, expression or uh, equation uh, now this s is equal to si plus s 1 degree component this is your primary settlement and this is your secondary settlement so the total settlement will be equal to your immediate settlement pri plus primary settlement plus consolidation settlement that is secondary settlement now immediate settlement is computed using the theory of elasticity by using theory of elasticity we can compute this immediate settlement very easily now net elastic settlement for a flexible surface foundation will be based on a theory of elasticity and as per theory of elasticity immediate settlement can be given by this equation si is equal to qn into b 1 minus mu square into if upon es now si is your immediate elastic settlement that will be used for both the sandy soil as well as for clay soil qn is your net foundation pressure B is your width of foundation and mu is your Poisson ratio. ES is your elasticity, modulus of elasticity, and IF is your influence factor, and that will depend on your shape and the rigidity of the structure. Now, this is your footing. This is also your footing. In this case, this footing is resting over beam, and this lower por portion will be showing you the deflected shape. This is of the rigid foundation case. This is your flexible foundation case where your foundation is deflecting from the center itself. now modulus of elasticity es can be cal calculated using this triaxial test second is your field test so in if you know this immediate settlement for the flexible case multiply it with 0.8 to get the settlement for the rigid case that is immediate settlement now when we are having this case that flexible footing over clay soil so 
in case of flexible footing the contact pressure at the interface between footing and soil is uniformly distributed producing disc shape pattern in clay soil so when we are having both the uh, like uh, footing is flexible and clay soil is also like a sort of loose so loose one so we'll be having a dish shape in this case right so this is your settlement and this is showing you the pressure intensity now second case is your flexible footing over granular soil so in granular soil we are all familiar that modulus of elasticity varies across the width being maximum at the center and minimum at the edge as e is maximum at center so the deflection is less at center as e is less at edge and deflection is more at edge so this figure itself is showing you the pressure intensity or the reacting forces of the soil right now in this case we are having granular soil and this footing is flexible so we know that this granular soil will offer more elasticity or we can say uh, the modulus of elasticity will be higher on the center portion compared to its edges so we'll be getting more settlement on edges compared to the center point now third one is your rigid footing on clay soil so when you are having a rigid footing over clay soil in this case the deflection is more at center this will be your rigid not flexible right so in case of rigid footing the deflection is more at center hence pressure developed at center is less right so in case of rigid footing now we know that the entire mass of that rigid footing that the cg will lie at this particular point and it will give you more impact to the soil right so in this case you will be getting higher pressure uh, hence pressure developed at the center is less right so in this case the uh, pressure developed at the center will be less and the deflection is less at the edge right now in rigid footing pressure developed is more at edge so this point says because from this particular point it will get transferred and the max and now you are be having soil also present here so we will be getting more pressure at this particular point so when you will be having more pressure so we will be having higher reacting forces at this particular point and you are having less pressure at the this particular point so we will be having less reacting force so the pressure distribution will be like this and settlement correspond to that will be shown now rigid footing on a granular soil so in case of granular soil you will be having deflected pattern like this this is your pressure uh, distribution and this is your deflected shape now now the permissible settlement in case of shallow foundation so in case of isolated footing resting on clay the total settlement will be 65 mm differential settlement will be 0.0015 l and angular distortion is 1 by 666 if in case of isolated footing on sand you will be having total settlement as 40 mm differential settlement as 0.0015 l and angular distortion is 1 by 666 in case of raft on clay you will be having total settlement as 65 to 100 that it will vary from 65 to 100 and differential settlement 0.0021 l and angular distortion as 1 by 500 in case of raft on sand you will be having 40 to 65 as a total settlement 0.0021 l as your differential settlement and 1 by 500 as your angular distortion now we'll be doing some example problem based on whatever we have learned so far so find we have to find the settlement of a footing of width 1.2 meter with the following plate load test result for first one is your sandy soil second one is your clay soil settlement of plate is given 15 mm and width of plate is given 400 mm so the data given like width of footing bf is equal to 1.2 meter is given width of plate is also given that is 0.4 meter settlement of plate is also given so similarly we can compute the settlement of footing by this empirical relation so sf is equal to sp bf bp plus 0.3 upon bp bf plus 0.3 whole square so we will be getting the settlement of foundation by putting all the given values in the particular expression so settlement of foundation comes to be 29.4 mm now we know the settlement of foundation correspondingly we can simply compute uh, for the clay soil also for the clay soil also we can compute using this formula for clay soil we are having this formula for granular soil we are having this formula so we will be getting this sf as 45 mm by putting all the relevant values in the expression now example 15 so what it says basically the following data was obtained from a plate load test carried out on a 60 cm square test plate at a depth of 2 meter below ground surface on a sandy soil which extends up to a large depth determine the settlement of a foundation 3 meter by 3 meter carrying a load of 110 
10 and located at a depth of 2 meter below the ground surface. So the load intensity is given for a corresponding load intensity we are having settlement also. So water table is located at a larger depth. So they are, uh, might be they are ignoring this water table correction factor. Now the data given is width of plate is given 30, not 30, 60 centimeter. Width of foundation is given as a 300 centimeter. Load carried by foundation, uh, what is this? Load carried by foundation. Okay, load carried by foundation is given as 110 ton. Now the size of foundation is also given 3 meter by 3 meter. So load intensity at the base of foundation can be easily computed. Load intensity will be equal to your whatever load that is carried by foundation divided by the planar area of foundation. So 110 divided by 3 into 3. So we'll be getting 12.2 ton per meter square as our load intensity. Now this is load intensity and this is settlement. So we have plotted a graph between load intensity and settlement from this particular data given. So we'll be having figure like this. Now for 12.2 ton per meter square corresponding to 12.2 meter ton per meter square we can compute the settlement right so the, from the load settlement graph load intensity of 12.2 ton per meter square will give you a settlement of test plate as 5 mm now the settlement of foundation can be computed by the empirical relation as well by putting all the values that are given sp 5 mm that we are putting this 5 mm and the relevant values so we'll be getting settlement of foundation as 9.3 mm so basically what we have done in this question we have simply compute what is, what is the load intensity that is coming on uh, foundation so once we are knowing the load intensity on foundation we can compute the settlement of plate right for the settlement of plate we can simply compute the settlement of foundation by putting all the relevant values moving on to the example problem 16 when a vertical face excavation was made in a deposit of clay, it failed at a depth of 2.8 meter of excavation. Find the shear strength parameter of the soil if its bulk density is 17 kN per meter cube in the deposit. At some other location, a plate load test was conducted with a 30 cm square plate placed at a depth of 1 meter below the ground level. The ultimate load was 13.5 kN, water table was at 4 meter below the ground level. Calculate the net safe bearing capacity of a 1.5 meter wide strip footing to be founded at a depth of 1.5 meter. Now we have to compute some factor of safety, it is not showing here. So what we will be doing, we will be plotting in the active earth pressure distribution, right? So we have plot, plotted like this. We know that this is minus 2c root k, this is k gamma z minus 2c root k and this is h naught. Now, for clay soil, we know this angle of intersection will be equal to your 0. Bulk density is given 17 kilonewton per meter cube. Critical height is equal to your 2.8 meter, right? So this critical height is 2.8 meter just because your excavation is failing at that particular point. Now, we can simply compute this PA is equal to K gamma Z minus 2C root K, right? So what we'll be doing, we'll be putting this uh, PA active uh, pressure is equal to zero at this particular point. So K gamma Z minus 2C root K. So we can simply compute this Z naught. And when we are uh, taking the twice of this critical, uh, taking the twice of this height, we'll be getting the critical height, right? So critical height will be equal to two times Z naught, that is 4C upon gamma root KA. Now we know this critical height is 2.8. 4c upon root k into gamma so from this particular point we can simply compute this cohesion so the cohesion of the soil will be equal to 11.9 kN per meter square so in case when you are putting this plate load test when you are doing this plate load test on a square plate so the square plate size is given 30 into 30 centimeter square so and founded at a depth of 1 meter size of the plate we know that 13 to 30 centimeter square we know the load on the plate that is 13.5 kilo newton we can simply compute this ultimate load capacity of soil under the plate by whatever load that is coming divided by the planar area so this will be your ultimate load capacity of soil under plate and by this expression also we can compute for cohesive soil we know this nc will be equal to 5.7 nq is equal to 1 and n gamma is equal to 0 so putting all the relevant things in this, we can simply compute this cohesion term. And in this case, we are getting cohesion 17.95. What we'll be doing, we'll be taking lesser of these two values that one we have obtained through Tarzaghi bearing capacity theory, one we have obtained through plate load test. So the lesser of these two will be taken as your value of cohesion. That is 11.9 kilonewton per meter square. 
Now in case of your history footing, when you are saying your depth of water table below the test level, that is 2.5 meter, 4 minus 1.5 meter, that will be your 2.5 meter. Depth is much more than the width of foundation. This 2.5 is much, much greater than 1.5. Therefore, there will be no influence of water table. And in this case, we will be simply writing the bearing capacity expression given by Tarzagi. And we will be using NC by 5.7, NQ is equal to 1 and N gamma is equal to 0 just because the soil is cohesive one. So we will be getting 5.7C plus gamma DF. Now net ultimate will be equal to your 5.7C. 5.7 into C is 11.9. So we will be getting net ultimate as 67.83. Net safe bearing capacity can be computed like this. Net safe, this will be net safe, not safe. Net safe will be equal to net ultimate divided by factor of safety. So we will be getting net safe as 22.61 kN per meter square. So likewise, we can simply uh, do all the numerical problems based on the uh, this plate load test and Tarzaghi bearing capacity theory. So example 17 is also based on that particular guidelines only. So this is our example 17. So you can practice this example 17 also at your home. Or we can also discuss, okay. Okay, let us discuss this example 17 as well. So a square footing is restricted to carry a net load of 1200 kN. We have to determine the size of footing if the depth of foundation is 2 meter and tolerable settlement is 40 mm. The soil is sandy with n is equal to 12 and factor of safety is equal to 3. Water table is very very deep and you, we have to use the tang equation. So figure is showing you a foundation that is being loaded with a 1200 kN and founded at a depth of 2 meter data is given we know from the tang equation we can come we can simply write this net safe as 1.4 n minus 3 b plus 0.3 upon 2 b whole square then s into c w into c d and water table correction is given by this expression half 1 plus d w by b so water table is very very deep now c w will be equal to half into 1 plus b by b we will be taking this as 1 also just because they are saying water table is at very deep, so there will be no effect. Depth factor will be there, 1 plus df by b, and this must be less than equal to 2. So 1 plus 2 by b, because foundation is founded at a depth of 2 meter. So it will be 1 plus 2 by b. And now net ultimate can be computed by putting all the relevant things in the expression. This n is given 12. This n is given 12. This n is given 12. Factor of safety is given 3. Right? Now. 12 minus 3 b plus 0.3 and putting all the things in relevant expression we will be getting uh, net safe and we know this net safe is equal to your net load by uh, width square and that is equal to your net safe divided by factor of safety net load will be equal see this is your allowable load basically the allowable load will be equal to your net safe divided by factor of safety or we can say this as a uh, yeah this is a allowable load allowable load will be equal to your net load uh, sorry, net safe divided by the factor of safety, net allowable bearing pressure, and this is your net allowable bearing pressure will be equal to net load divided by the planar area. Now, net load will be equal to your net load will be equal to your 1200 multiplied by factor of safety because this is your ultimate load, 1200 kN. So, ultimate load multiplied by the factor of safety will give you the net load by b square. So, from this, by doing all the uh, altering alterations, we will be simply getting this with the term b so by solving or we can say by putting hit and trial we will be getting this b term so therefore the size of footing will be 4.08 meter by 4.08 meter